Are you RVing too much? That's what we're talking about today. If you or your loved ones are showing any of these signs, the answer may be yes, so stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me here today. Now, I know most people think there's no such thing as RVing too much. And for the most part, you're right. But there are symptoms and signs that might tell us that we are actually RVing too much that's what we're going over today. And I know each and every one of you have probably displayed some of these signs. Let's dive into the list. First up is that you're talking about the RV black tank situation with non RVers. I know that in a community of RVers, one of the first things we speak about is how we deal with black water, whether we have any horror stories, if we use a composting toilet or what type of chemicals we use to loosen it up once it hits the tank. Well, if these are the conversations you're having with someone who lives a sticks and bricks life, uh, you might be RVing just a little too much. Another sign that you're RVing too much is that you are worried about electrical consumption when you're not in your RV. Now, if you travel in an RV for any amount of time, you know that running the microwave and running your blow dryer at once is an easy way to flip the breaker. It is just the way RVs are work. You have to be very concerned about what you're using and how you're using it with other appliances. The coffee maker, the hair dryer, the refrigerator, the toaster oven. There are lots of ways to overload an RV electrical system. And fortunately, in sticks and bricks life, it's not nearly as easy to overload an electrical system. But once you're back in your house, living your day-to-day -day life, if you're worried about what electronics you got running up together, it might be a sign you are RVing just a little too much. <laughs> Number three is that you try to pedal flush your home toilet. <laughs> we all know that flushing with your foot is not the way a home toilet works, but in an RV, it's most likely the way that you're gonna be flushing your toilet. These are the things that can transfer over to everyday sticks and bricks life once you've been on the road for too long. I know in our composting toilet, there are a whole host of other concerns that we have, but it is a nice day whenever we get to use a residential toilet flushing with our hand rather than our foot. Let me know if that one resonates with you because I've heard a lot of people try to flush their home toilet with their foot once they get back from an RV trip. I wanna let you know that we have a map of the 21 best free campsites in America. It's free for you to download. You can print it up, bring it on your trip, print it up and frame it. We love this thing and uh, it shows all of our favorite free campsites. If you wanna download this map, I'll put a link in the comment section below. Easy to get, also in the description of the video. Check out that map, let us know if you've been to any of those spots. Number four on the list, you temporarily forget where you're waking up. <laughs> this happens to the best of us, but I feel like the sensation really gets exaggerated whenever you're on the road, and uh, you could be waking up at a Walmart parking lot, at a nice RV resort in Maine and California, it's very easy to get the location blurred whenever you're waking up from sleeping in an RV. What we've also found is that once we get back in our sticks and bricks life, we might think we're actually on the road when we're waking up, but lo and behold, we're just in our house, in our regular location. But it is one of the signs that you've been RVing too much. And the fifth sign that you've been RVing too much, which is wonderful to do if you're in house life, is that you try to conserve water. For every RVer out there, conserving water is one of the most important things we do on the road. Whether it's taking a Navy shower, whether it's collecting our dish water, there are so many ways we conserve water when we're in an RV because you only have a finite amount of water there to use before you have to fill up again. Well, those habits can bleed over into everyday life whenever you're in your sticks and bricks. You might be a little more conservative when you're washing dishes. You might not flush the toilet for a few uses if you're just letting the yellow mellow. So there are many ways where it's a sign that you're RVing a little too much, but one of the better signs that we can do once we go back to our sticks and bricks life, conserving the water because, hey, it's just a good habit to have anyways. Let me know what you thought about this list because I sure as heck know there's no real way you could be RVing too much. I love being out there on the road. I wish I was out there on the road right this minute, but hey, pretty beautiful environment we're at now anyway, so I can't complain too much, but let me know if there's anything that you've seen that you've done once you come back to your sticks and bricks lifestyle that bled over from the RV living and those RV, ro RV road trips you've been taking. Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure you check out that 21 free campsites map. We'll see you next time, later on.